Hello, this is uh, my second part of the OneView uh, uh, initial setup. So in the first part of the video, we walk through the step uh, by step, you know, uh, initial setup process for a brand new OneView virtual appliance. Uh, that's based on the simulator, and really I couldn't show you the any upstream uh, switch connectivity. So right now this is uh, my lab, you know, the live system uh, connecting with the upstream with the Nexus 5672 UP switches and also brocade uh, 6510 uh, Sun Fabric switch and also con connect with the three par. Pretty much using this interface, I can show you how it looks like on the uh, brocade side, on the Cisco side, along with how, how does it look like on the OneView side. Also, we'll briefly cover how to config the uh, brocade, uh, brocade network advisor integration with OneView along with the uh, three par integration with OneView. And later on, we'll do a very short demo about, you know, so you can create the uh, three par virtual volume, pretty much the, uh, the long on the three par and the being exported to one of the OneView host and also let the brocade do the everything auto zoning. So you don't, you really, you can sit uh, inside the OneView, you don't have to manually go into the three par, go into the, to do the uh, virtual volume and the host provisioning, and you don't have to go to the three uh, brocade to do the manual zoning. Okay, so let's get started. So pretty much this is my uh, lab system. This is uh, all the real hardware. I have two enclosures uh, for this demo. We'll just show focus on one of them, and uh, the one will be sh focusing on will be enclosure two. Okay, actually enclosure uh, three. Okay, so you can see this one is based on the. If you see the enclosure group, uh, you know I have this enclosure group uh, defined. This enclosure group is def uh, uh, defined by the uh, logical interconnect group of, of this uh, flex, uh, virtual connect flex fabric 2040 module. So this is my uplink configuration. And uh, let me show you the real configuration, how it looks like on the, on the system. So, so this is uh, my second enclosure. So we can take a look at it. Yeah, so it, for so this system, I have kind of a four uh, virtual kind of modules. Uh, one, two, and the, and the flex fabric, and the three and four is for the 2040 module. So you don't have to do that. The purpose of this is so you don't have to match my configuration. Very likely, you will have only have you know two flex fabric. Either it's ten, uh, you know, original ten and gig or 2040 FA, the new module. So, but pretty much I want to show you, you know, how it looks like on the, for the networking and uh, some fabric. There's uh, some warnings about saying, okay, my uh, one, two is a supported, but it's not, you know, in line with my, you know, uh, baseline firmware. So uh, it's for some other testing. Uh, so you can ignore that warning message. But for this one, you can see, let's take a look at it on the uh, general, general tab. So you can see the, this is uh, how it looks like, you know. So if we want to dig in further, actually we'll just uh, dig further to see uh, how how it looks like the, uh, we'll go to the one, go back to, we'll hop into the edit mode so you can see how it is defined, okay. So uh, as I mentioned, focus on the three and four, this module. So this module, you can see port X1, X2, is the fiber channel and uh, five and six is for ethernet and one two actually going to this uh, vSAN network is going I, I i know it's you know going to one of the six five brocade six five ten okay and three and four is going to uh, cisco nexus okay and uh, this is a two of uh, one is for fiber channel, another is for Ethernet for the module two. Okay, so if you really drill, they pretty much mirror the configuration just for load sharing and the uh, redundancy. So if you dig into the one of the uh, the Ethernet configuration with the Nexus, you can see this is my configuration looks like, and you can see my I didn't set it the native. Uh, it's up to you. You can set it as long as you match on the Cisco side. And uplink, you can see this is a uh, 
I obey three, x5, x6. If you want to take a look at, uh, I'll, 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 we'll jump to the Cisco at the end. So pretty much, you know, for the vSAN configuration, it's a similar for what we defined in the uh, first video part. So we'll just uh, create a vSAN fabric inside Virtual Connect and uh, assign it to this uh, uh, vSAN uplink. You can see x1, x2 showing it just to say x5 x5 6 has been used by some other uplink okay same thing going to same thing going to the virtual connect in module 2 the only difference is you have to use the uh with the same id but you need to create a different you know, uh, internal virtual network to to map it to go into uh iob4 x5 and x6 and lastly, so let's take a look at the the uh, I/O module for the visa, uh, you know the uh, Sun Fabric configuration. You can see X1, X2, and uh, interconnect module four. Okay. So the key theme for the Cisco is, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at on the Cisco side. So on the Cisco, uh, I have uh, this. Let's see, show LDP neighbor. You can see this is a, a one of the Nexus 5600. Uh, this is a 2040 module. This is a this is serial number for the module. So you can see I have you know, it, this guy's doing the VPC. So you can see a one. One two port one two on both switches is connecting to my base three and the port uh, one three uh, for both switches is connecting to uh, to uh, base four. Okay, so oh, if you do the show, let's see. So right now you can put, put channel one is kind of doing the you know peer link, and uh, if you do the neighbor. Uh, one five show. This interface one six detail. Okay, so that's a that's IP I want to get. So later I can show you. So show LDP. Um, shows you the neighbor information. If you do the show or run interface Ethernet 2, so that's the show uh, run interface here, channel 101 membership. So you can see on the switch one, I have a port channel 101. This one will be dedicated to oh, on both switches for the virtual connect uh, module one. Okay, you can see my VLAN setup. And also, I need to set up the edge trunk, you know, just to treat the virtual connect as the uh, normal host ports because it doesn't talk with any STP spanning tree with the switch. And uh, on the uh, so that's pretty much on the on the switch one. And the switch one, you also need to have set up another uh, port channel one or two that will be matching. You can see one three will be matching the module three. So Review again for the show LDP neighbor. You can see module three is the uh, going to the bay four, going to the other uh, virtual connect module. So if you do, uh, let's see, log into. Okay, so show. So pretty much uh, switch to pretty much has the same configuration. You can see port one, but you know on the on the on the B three module we'll be using the uplink X six coming to the Cisco uh, second switch, and you know port channel uh, you know the virtual connect module four in IOB four will using the X six uh, going to the. Uh, Going to the uh, Ethernet 1.3 for for this switch. So if you do the show interface 1.1 membership, you'll see pretty much the same configuration. Uh, let me put channel 
want to membership yeah so to the show vpc okay so the most common problem people tend to make is the uh, they cannot get the one view of virtual kind of manager working with Cisco is the uh, doing the VPCs, you know, they're cabling, you need to do the cross connect. So from the uh, first virtual connect module, you have one cable going to the first Cisco switch and then uh, another cable uh, going to another uh, second Cisco uh, switch, doing the same thing on the uh, second virtual connect module. And also on Cisco switch, you need to create, you know, the two port channel, the the first per channel will be going to on both switches will be talking with the virtual kind of module one so many people will try to say okay i only create one per channel on cisco i'm trying to bundle all four links together with the two virtual kind of module that that's not the right configuration okay so the right way on cisco is uh, on both switches create two per channel uh, and then uh, one per channel dedicated to uh, one virtual kind of module okay so that's the Cisco side. For the for the uh, on the one view side, if you the way you can verify the connectivity, remember it's going to the port level, so interconnect level. So if you go to the this enclosure interconnect three, and if you do the general. So you can see pretty much lo lots of details on the on this module. Okay, X5, X6. You can see X5. You know, right now we have a connector. We have the remote remote connection, right? So that's that's the way you how you can verify. Okay, so you're going to. So right now, currently, we we kind of you know for this version 110, we're showing the uh mac remote cisco mac address but uh, i'm pretty sure in the future version there will be an enhancement so you can really see the lldp host name so that's uh easier for user to identify okay but pretty much you, that's the way you how you can verify the connectivity on the cisco side so you can see this is pretty much the same thing Okay, and for the uh, brocade, uh, this is a fiber channel. Oh, really? You want to take, go into the port channel, uh, not the port channel, port one and two. You can see this is the. This is actually the. You can see vSAN 01, vSAN 02. This is actually the brocade, the uh, switch, uh, worldwide uh, switch. Uh, switch worldwide name. So let's see if we can see that. So this is a brocade. Uh, switch show. So you can see this is a switch worldwide name is CEO2. Okay, so if you go back, it's a CEO2, right? So if you go into the module 4, uh, This is a 40E2. So if you go here. Uh, so. 40E2. Okay, so that's matching our topology. So uh, that's pretty much the the uh, I want to show you the uplink connectivity. So if you really want to see further, uh, you can see the on the brocade. You can see the this is this is uh, you know the uh, virtual connect itself. It's doing the NPV NPV logging. So the first step, the virtual connect is trying to log in by itself. Later on. It will forward all the server login to the brocade. Okay, so this is a brocade, the first switch. Uh, the same thing should be coming over here to the second switch. Right, so this is the. So this is a 20. 
So let's go back to the first switch. So the first switch, we use two ports. Those, this is the first port, this is the second port, right? Zero, two zero 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 six e six. This is a pretty much two zero zero one. So if you go to oh, into connect three on the one view side, so you can see the one view. Of the oh, just to make it bigger. This is the port uh, worldwide name for the one view X1 and X2 port. So you can see they're locked in over there. Okay, so that's uh, the first part I want to show you. The second part, remember in the uh, initial configuration, we really didn't uh, go into go further into the volume uh, storage system and the sun management, uh, sun manager. So this part will be for HP three power store serve you know integration this part will be for the brocade the network advisor so you don't have to do them and uh, you know without them if you as long as you you set up the server and the networking right you should be able to do your traditional uh it you know server provisioning with a fiber channel with ip storage uh, pretty much you know that that we already covered so far but if you uh, in the one view uh, 1.10 uh, there are two integration uh, very nice introduced into this version. One is a three-part integration, and the one is a brocade integration. So we'll, we'll I'll try to do a sh small demo to to show how how you can leverage this this integration. So pretty much on the on the three-part side, you know, assuming this is brand new, you have a three-part you want to integrate into the uh, one view. The right step is you do the right add uh, storage system. Uh, you, you will need to provide the IP address and the login credential. And after that, uh, you will, after you, you get your know, login credential right, you will get a, a screen like something like this, right? So it will pull the, all the ports, uh, host ports on the three power. And the thing you need to do is uh, on the, my, this is a 7400 uh, 2 node system. So I have two ports, uh, 0, 3, 0, 2, 3, and 123 matching uh, the uh, going to the first brocade, which is the uh, internal mapping to my virtual connect first module. So you need to manually say, okay. Uh, I want to match, uh, you know, you know, map it to the internal vSAN, you know, uh, Sun Fabric 01. And for the 04 and uh, 024 and 124, I know I cabled them up to the second brocade. It should be corresponding to my Sun Fabric B. So you just need to map them up uh, inside the one view. You're pretty much you are telling the one view, you know, how how it should, you know, linked up to the external. Oh, virtual connect uh, fabric and also internal virtual connect fabric okay so that's you know after you import you get you you need to finish this uh, mapping and uh, after that then you can have multiple options so you uh, first you want to review your st storage pools this is the more like the CPG on the three part so on the three part you can do the you know if you go to the provisioning tab for the common provision group. I, I don't want to go to the details, but pretty much, you know, that's a fundamental where you want to, you know, create a virtual volume. Every virtual volume will be based on the CPG. Okay, so they, so it, it pretty much after you import the uh, three-part system, the CPG will be over here under the storage pools. And then you can, it's optionally, you can create a virtual template to me, uh, this uh, you know, this will just give you some you know you can set up you know how much capacity if it's a thin or thick, and uh, what's the CPG you want to be based on. You don't have to do it. You can the final goal is to create some volume so your one view can prop, uh, to add them under the server, right? So uh, that's the that's the uh, you know the the final goal. But you know. Virtual uh, template can save you some time, uh, but to me it's not too much, you know. So we'll we'll just uh, skip this part and let's go to the volume. So right now, assuming I want to 
demo this, you know, I want to create a volume, right? So I want to create a volume and this is a final, the, some, you know, volume you want to create on the three part side. And this is a virtual uh, volume template. You can attach it to the, to whatever you defined over here, right? So, so you can save you typing the capacity or thing or thick volume here, shared private. But you, without that, you can still type in manually here. Okay, so it just uh, so this is a basic uh, step. Before I create a volume, I want to give you a quick introduction about the uh, brocade because for the demo to work, uh, I need both uh, uh, brocade and, and aggregation and the uh, three-part integration in your in your setup, you can, you know, you can have just only three parts, that's totally fine. You just need to go to the brocade switches to do the manual zoning. So with the brocade integration, uh, you, you brocade will do the auto zoning for you by the brocade network advisor. So the way uh, it works is, you know, you need to find a server to put a brocade network advisor software over there. Let's see if I have, I can have it. Oh, another thing before uh, we we go further. In order for that three part to to be imported, very important because you know when we we'll use everything as web API to talking with the three part. So you want to make sure you you on the three part CRI you do this command to make sure your it's it's enabled. Uh, by default, it's it's not enabled. You just need to do the uh, enable, you know, WS API, Web Service API to, to enable that. So uh, for the detailed configuration, uh, I already, we, we already uh, have the one documentation will, which will be on the uh, hp.com very soon to show you how to config using the step-by-step -step about how to enable this, this service. It's just one command, okay, but this video Oh, we'll just uh, go through this whole process really quick. And the bro for the brocade, so pretty much you want to, uh, you need to, you need to download, uh, you need to download uh, the exe file. So, Yeah, you need to download the Brocade uh, Network Advisor and uh, unzip, uh, unzip it and install it. So after install, uh, pretty much this is the this is the view, right? You you can and then the next step is you want to on the Brocade Network Advisor you want to add your Brocade switch so the software know where is your fiber channel fabric and how it's config. So in this case, I already added the two of my brocade switches right and that's that's pretty much it after that you you get some you know the brocade network advisor has a lot of functionality it's uh, you know you can monitor to end-to-end -end ip and uh, mprs and the fiber channel network health you know it's the it's the primary brocade network management software right now we are not touching any of this i just want to have this network advisor to to be integrated into the one view so we can do the auto zoning. So for three part to, uh, for the one view to talk with the Brocade Network Advisor, after initial installation, it's very important you do this part. You want to check going to the Network Advisor configuration and click that. And eventually you will get into this configuration. You want to make sure your SMI agent is enabled with the default port number. This has to be enabled. The port number has to match with the uh, one view configuration. So one view can talk with a brocade network advisor. Okay, so that's just a one note. That's pretty much done on the brocade network advisor part. After you set it up, uh, you will go into one view and you say, okay, add sun manager. This IP address should be your brocade network advisor IP. Remember this 5989. That's the brocade, you know, the SMI agent, the default um, uh, port number. Okay, then you put the, uh, your login credential 
and to try to try to log in. Okay. And after that, it will try come back with a confirmation. Pretty much, it will say, okay, it's ready. And inside that brocade network advisor, there's a two Sun Fabric discovered. It's ready for auto auto zoning. Okay. So right now, brocade is set. It's, uh, there's a, still one more step. It's very important. You need to, assuming you configure your fiber channel, you need to go to the networks. And you really need to go to your original configuration for your internal virtual connect fabric. This field, one with before you, you get the brocade working, should be empty. So it should be something like, uh, no, I don't want to change it. So it should be empty. So after after you have the brocade network advisor, you should say, okay, for my internal virtual connect fabric, I know it's going to for this first one, it's going to the first virtual connect module, it's going to the first six five ten uh, net uh, switch. So they need to match with my uh, Sun Fabric A. Okay, this information is pulled from the network advisor because network advisor has the intelligence on how 6510 is config. Okay, so you need to add this information here and then you do the same thing for your second fiber channel. You do the same thing for your second fiber channel. Okay, so then the, uh, that's pretty much the setup for, so you are ready for, uh, for the auto zoning. So let's go back to the volume. Remember, we still haven't created volume yet. So let's create some uh, a, a volume. Uh, let's do review the configuration for the server profile. So the goal is okay. I want to show for this server blade. I want to show you know we can add a you know create a, a virtual volume and uh, on the three power side create a host on the three power side and do the auto zoning on the uh, brocade side. Okay, so all inside one view. So if you if you take a look at this. So right now the sun storage, uh, even though I checked it, there's really nothing there. Okay, so, and you remember this host profile, uh, server profile name, uh, FF2040 Bay 10. So if you go to the brocade, uh, if you're going to the host side, uh, there's really no host code, you know, FF2040 Bay 10. Okay, and for the, for the three par, right now I have a two static zoning. Okay, I have a two static zoning for both switches. Okay, so, and also let's go to the, uh, go to the virtual volume. Go to the provision, virtual volume. Uh, we'll just create one for FF2040, okay. So right now there's no volume starting with the letter FF 2040. Okay, we'll just create one. So, so you can see it's showing up on the three part side. So let's go back to the volume. We'll call it FF 2040 Bay 10 Sun Volume. one okay so virtual volume one okay uh, volume template yeah I can choose uh, search I'll just use this one this is the one CPG uh, virtual template we, we define optionally in the one view so it just to say okay I want to pull from this CPG and uh, it's 10 gig we can change it we can say okay 40 gig and the thing is share say create okay then let's go to three par so so the three par is gonna to oh talk has a co internal communication with the let's see this guy this guy showed up so so 40 gig this is the one we just created inside one view and you can see the host is really nothing we didn't have any host provision we didn't have and then host to be exported. 
So the host will be created after we say, okay, in the one view, we want to attach this volume to a particular host, which is the server profile. Then at that moment, uh, so some things will, several things will happen. So the a host will be created with a server profile name, and this volume will be exported to this host, and the brocade um, fiber channel will be, uh, pro, you know, the uh, doing uh, be auto zoned by the brocade network advisor. Okay. So right now, you can see really. Let's check the my port login stuff. So I know this fabric A, I have two ports. Right now they, this is a Procom, this is a MLX, this is a 1D for the second one switch. This is two ports going to the virtual connect. This is a, some 1D. This is another MLX. We just need to look match the. Uh, we just need to match the you know the server profile name. Okay, so let's take a look at the connection. Uh, this volume. So we'll go back to server profile. So the two fabric uh, two address will care. It should be one C. And. 001C and 001E. Okay, so 001C. Yeah, so this one is, you know, it's locked in, but it's not zoned, you can see. In the zoning, I don't have any of this information, right? The server is booted up, it's locked in, but, you know, nothing happened on the zoning part. And the same thing for the for the one e. So this is the one e logged in here. Okay, but no zone no zone has been defined yet. Okay, so so let's go to this profile. I will click edit send storage I want to do the add volume okay so this guy we just created 40 so I'll click add click OK so you don't have to power down the host to do that And I know this guy is the uh it's two ten. One sixty two ten. Log in here. So okay, it's completed. And let's go to three power. Let's wait for it to refresh. Okay, see now it's showing up over here and we have a new host just created. You can see the host information. This is automatically created by the one view talking with the three parts. It's locking on all four ports. And take a look at on the three uh, on the uh, zoning side, we'll do the refresh for the switch one. And we'll do the refresh for the switch to. So you see, you see the three zones. So this is the guy how to be provisioned by. You can see the one C is from the host going to the two, uh, three power, zero to three and one to three port. The same thing is true for second fabric. You can see it should be one E, one E going to zero to four and one to four, right? So that's, Everything is automatically done. So, 
So this is attached to this server and the three par is the has the right information as well that's port information so we'll take a look at on the on the vcenter so i know it's a 210 so let's go to this guy go to the manage go into the hp storage go into the storage sorry Okay, so right now this is a 40 uh, gig, the lung just uh, being uh, discovered by the uh, ESXi host. So you can, it's ready for the VMS data store to, to be provisioned. So that's that's how how to set up the uh, BNA and the 3PAR integration. Uh, that ends this demo. Thank you very much.